In the last many years, we've had only less than 50% of members being re-elected into parliament. 5% of a return rate. 22 of these returning members served in the 11th parliament or in earlier parliaments, like the Honorable uh, Chairperson of Speaker's Panel, the Honorable Member uh, for Dadab. It is also not worthwhile noting, Your Excellency, that the balance in the House is steadily picking in terms of gender balance. And out of the members that were elected in this assembly, 81 female members comprising of 47 county women representatives, 28 elected single member constituency MPs, and six nominated members are of the female gender. This representing 23% of the total membership of the House and therefore slightly short of the 10% of 10% to achieve the one third gender rule constitutional threshold. Your Excellency, aware that a number of us are first time members, this forum is also very suitable for interaction, for experience sharing, and we've already had that opportunity from many of our resource persons who have been able to speak to us this morning, and also for expectation management on legislative discourse as a member of parliament. It is absolutely critical to fresh men and fresh women in the House. Parliamentarians who have come for the first time will have tremendous opportunities to learn on how to discharge their triple mandate of representation, legislation, and oversight. For the old-timers, this may look rhetorical, but for the new members, it is novel. And we come here, Your Excellency, to reaffirm our commitment to our republic, to our democracy, to our constitutionalism, and above all, duty as parliament to understand and appreciate at all times that the centrality of our 2010 constitution are the people of Kenya. And it's the people of Kenya that we all, including yourself, Your Excellency, have taken oath of office to serve. As parliament, we will play our role. We will pass laws that are pro-people, laws that will enhance the change that we desire and require in the country. As a parliament, we will help you to ensure that the resources that the people of Kenya place in the hands of the government through taxes are put to good use. The National Assembly plays its part in setting the stage for us to deliver on our commitment to undertake a radical socio-economic transformation with a view to uplifting Kenyans and all our people. I am therefore immensely privileged to have this singular opportunity to convey my gratitude to you in person and let you know that I do not take your consideration for agenda of the Kenya gov government for granted. Thank you very much. It is by working together in this spirit that we, as leaders, affirm the hope that Kenya's bright future can be guaranteed through dedicated service of our shared commitment. Mr. Speaker, I recently conveyed a list of additional names of persons whose suitability the House shall consider once it resumes. I request honorable members to perform their duty expeditiously to enable successful nominees assume their roles without delay. This is essential for our good governance. As set out in my address at the joint sitting of the House and reiterated in my memorandum to the Speaker, we see transparency and accountability as vital components of good governance, effective delivery, and the legitimacy of the executive. For this reason, 
the government is committed to the radical announcement of its accountability to the people of Kenya through their democratically elected representatives in parliament. In keeping with this commitment to enhancing government accountability, I have formally requested parliament to formulate within its procedures a mechanism for cabinet secretaries to appear before the House and give account.